we're at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, and we're looking at a painting by Paul Gauguin, The Red Cow from 1889. It's a really wild painting. It is a wild painting. There's a woman in the left corner with a jug, and the she's kind of near. moving. Right, the very foreground. She's moving toward the left edge of the image, and she's of the frame, and she's cut off. And the cow is moving is also the opposite direction. Cut off. His head is cut <laughs> off. So she's moving off to the left, and our attention goes to her first, but then she's sort of moving off stage mm -hmm. in a very distracting kind of way. Mm -hmm. And then the cow is also presumably moving slightly to mm -hmm. the right, and there's a small dog that seems to be kind of chasing, chasing it. the cow. And then there's a kind of fence and a hedge behind them, locking them into the foreground. Right, which has its own careful attention. There's a wonderful kind of contrast of color, of course, between the orange, pink, red, Red cow of the cow and the, green and the brilliant grass. green. But then in yeah. the foreground, all the colors of the cow can be seen in the flowers, yeah. which are really, really delicately delicate. painted for a Gauguin. Yeah. Very unusual. Yeah. And again, are in the bodice of the woman who's bending forward towards us. The orange holding, again. Yeah, holding that pitcher, and, mm -hmm. um, and her and then eyes these are delicately. purples against the orange. Oh, you know, he's gorgeous. so thinking about complementary colors yeah, here. He it's so obvious. He really is. And there's a lot of drawing in here. I mean, look at the delicacy of the light on her face mm -hmm. as she bends down and their shadow yeah. and reflected color. Yeah, it's interesting that you say light because in some ways there's light in this painting and in some ways there isn't to me. It's not atmospheric at all. Oh, that's true. This is not the light of the Impressionists. No, not at there's, all. there is light. I mean, you can sort of say, okay, there is sunlight in this landscape and there is sunlight hitting her face and, and shadow. shadow as well. yeah. But there's but, no but, sense of atmosphere. And so what happens is that the light seems to be located almost almost the way that color is as a pooled area that mm -hmm. is not necessarily a result of clouds and no. sun, but seems to almost generate from the it object itself. Themselves. It's yeah. almost actually in a kind of pre Renaissance mm -hmm. style. Right. And that light right. is where they're not thinking about the way that light actually looks yet and reflects That's and right. moves and yeah. He's clearly trying to transcend, I think, those kinds of naturalistic effects to say something a little bit more but he's serious some, and a little bit more spiritual and a little bit more meaningful. I think the spiritual is absolutely intentional here. Mm -hmm. But I think he's running into some problems because the subject itself is so aestheticized. It's so laden with the tradition of the landscape and yeah. and so you know you've got this really beautiful kind of aesthetic quality if you look at the field just beyond the fence the middle ground you have this very light pool of light green and, and purple and orange. Yeah, I mean, beautiful. they really are. And it's almost a wash, as if it was mm -hmm. a kind of watercolor. Yeah. And of course, there are two men Very there. Very thinly kind of applied. Yeah, two farm workers. It looks like Tilling this, the field, you know, the scythe. scythe. Yeah. And then above that, these very elegant um, cypress, trees. cypress trees. Yeah, which makes and me clouds. think that this might be when he's down in the south of France. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the, the cypress trees become very abstracted. These just vertical forms, and then the clouds are also just these very very simple shapes. Again, really nothing atmospheric about the clouds and the sky and the flat blue color of the sky. There's something very kind of transcendent it's about true. the landscape that conflicts for me with the kind of, and maybe this is sort of what he was going of for, the, the sort of everydayness yeah. of the scene in the foreground with yeah. the woman and the picture, which sort of reminds me of Vermeer and the cow, but it's, and then this landscape that is somehow kind of magical. We see that division in, in Gauguin's work. If you think about Jacob wrestling with an angel, mm -hmm. you have that exactly. very clear division by the bough of the tree where you have the spiritual displaced from yep. the physical, the actual, the, yeah. the space in which we inhabit. It. And we're a part of that, you know, the area that's that's on this yeah, side of the fence. And he's clearly divided yeah. these two areas, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a pretty wonderful painting. Yeah.